under one of the weeks, but um, this is going to be important for the test to know the advantages and disadvantages of asexual versus sexual reproduction. So I'm just going to go back to that real quickly, and then I'm going to give you some examples of different ways that different organisms reproduce. So let's see. It says it's loading. Um, so if you go to the third slide on here, I believe it's the third slide, fourth. Um, this is important, the advantages and disadvantages of asexual reproduction versus sexual reproduction. So um, the advantages of asexual reproduction, remember that only takes one parent, the offspring are a clone, and it uses less time and energy, and only one parent is required. That's the advantages. Advantages of sexual reproduction is our offspring are diverse, and we are more protected by our diversity against parasites and environmental changes. Disadvantages of asexual reproduction, even though it doesn't um, take much time, there are some disadvantages. Um, disadvantages, all the offsprings are clones or they're all identical. And that protects those, in, those organisms that reproduce asexually are not protected from parasites or environmental changes as well. Disadvantages of sexual reproduction is it uses a lot more energy, a lot more time, and you need two parents. You need the egg and the sperm needed to reproduce. So I just wanted to make sure you remembered all of those advantages and disadvantages, which like I said are in a folder on Schoology. Now I want to show you some of the um, different types of ways that organisms reproduce that are going to be important for the test. The first one is hens and chicks. And hens and chicks are not hens and chicks, they're actually a plant. So let me show you what a hens and chick looks like. Um, these are the little plants that you might have seen outside. They have like one center plant here and then they have what are called offsets. And those offsets grow asexually. They're actually clones of the parent plant. So that's one type of plant. Those are called offsets, hens and chicks. Bacteria reproduce through the process of binary fission. So remember that bacteria are um, single-celled organisms. You have three different types. We didn't really learn about the three different types, so you don't need to really know that for the test, but you do need to know that they reproduce through a process called binary fission. Binary fission, B-I-N-A-R-Y-F-I-S-S-I-O-N, -S -S binary fission. And it just simply means that they split in half. The next um, organism that I want to talk to you about is planaria. Planaria is a type of worm. And planaria are interesting because um, they, in, they reproduce, here's a nice little planaria. Basically what could happen is you cut a piece of the planaria off and it grows a new planaria. That is a type of asexual reproduction and it is called Fragmentation, fragmentation, F-R-A-G-M-E-N-T-A-T-I-O-N, fragmentation. These are planaria. They're little, small little worms. They're not microscopic, but they're pretty small. Then yeast. Yeast is um, a single-celled organism that reproduces a couple of different ways. They do reproduce sexually, but most of the time they reproduce asexually by growing these little buds off of them. So the process by which yeast produce is called budding. B-U-D-D-I-N-G. Um, tulips reproduce through a process where they have bulbs. So tulips have bulbs. And let's see if we can find a picture of a bulb. Um, here, here's some tulip bulbs. So basically what happens is you put that bulb in the ground and it reproduces asexually uh, through the process of bulbs. 
Um, they can obviously tulips also create flowers so they can also reproduce sexually. Mold is another uh, organism that reproduces asexually. So mold reproduction and mold reproduction happens by something called sporulation. Here's a kind of a life cycle of mold and their reproduction process. If you've ever seen moldy bread, they create spores. The spores eventually land on something else and then form the new mold. Now, mold can also reproduce sexually in a different process. So mold can reproduce both asexually or sexually, but when they produce asexually, they reproduce through a process called sporulation. Potatoes reproduce through tubers. So potatoes can reproduce both asexually and sexually, but when they reproduce asexually, they form these tubers. Um, so you can see, and I have that potato up on my desk that's reproducing asexually. So those are tubers. Strawberries, spider plants, um, reproduce asexually through a process called runners. And what happens with that is that the strawberry sends out uh, a little clone plant off of the main plant. See the little runner there? And it forms a new plant off to the side. And that new plant is a clone. It's an exact copy of the parent plant. There's another example there. And so those runners can be replanted and they're a clone of the parents, so reproducing asexually. Onions also reproduce through bulbs. So much like um, tulips. So there's the bulb of an onion. Same thing, it reproduces asexually. And they also reproduce sexually um, through flowering. Uh, what, what's the last one? Oh, grass. Grass can reproduce through something called rhizomes. So what happens is these underground um, network of grasses can actually form new grass. So it's called rhizomes. Let's see if I can find a picture of that. There we go. So there's the parent plant, and it's kind of like a runner as well, only it's under the ground and the rhizome forms on the side. So those are the main types of asexual reproduction that you will have to know for the test. So make sure if you want to, you can go back and study this and practice learning about all the different ways that organisms reproduce asexually.